Seriously, Erin? Stop getting moth products. Why? Because they're not good. What are you talking about? All the sponsored reviewers say that these products are amazing. Oh, right. These products are so great. Wait, we're doing sponsored videos now? Well, no. Phew. This product, like the Moth Wallet, isn't great. It looks cool, but generally things that look cool are useless. Like Aaron. So in this video, we're gonna go through the design of this product. We're gonna talk about the functionality, and then we're also gonna review the uh, trip fold keyboard as well. And then we'll compare the entire setup against all the other iPad keyboards that we've used. Monty, you're up. Monty. Monty. I'll be honest, Moff does come up with some pretty neat products. And neat is the key word, as they're not that useful. Take their magic wallet attachment for the iPhone. Neat idea, subpar product, because it tries to do too much from our perspective. Check out that video if you want all the details. So does the Moft float fail on the same account? Not really. Do we like it? Nope. Now Moft claims that their product is the only floating case for the iPad, but that's only sort of true. What we're showing you here isn't the Moft float case, it's the Magic Keyboard that also causes the iPad to float. Now besides float mode, there's stable mode and portrait mode. Seriously guys, there's a mode called stable mode. Stable mode. Stable mode on an iPad Pro case would be the equivalent of your car having a probably won't crash mode. Like it just... <laughs> The stand on the float has two hinges that allow it to have, technically, an infinite amount of viewing angles and viewing heights. The hinge is fairly tight and hasn't loosened over time, and it also gets very annoying to use over time. Now we're basing this on the hinge on the smart keyboard, which is smooth like butter. The inside of the case is lined with microfiber. There's cutouts for all the various inputs and outputs, though the case by itself has some odd bends here and there. The edge where your Apple Pencil goes is thin enough to charge through. The hinge itself is made from a combination of metal and plastic, and there's a small retractable foot that helps prevent your iPad from tipping over. So Val, what are we drinking today? A pickleback, is that what it's called? Yes, with a beer chaser. I'm not happy about this at all. Like I can smell it. And I like pickles, but. It's good? Yeah. I don't know if I can beer. drink it that fast. <laughs> Here we go. That's actually really good. Right? <laughs> I was scared about the pickle juice, but it like evens it out. Yeah. The Moth float case is basically one of those things that looks cool, but doesn't really work well. The buttons on this case are quite stiff, which kind of sucks the joy out of using your $2,000 iPad a little bit. It's the equivalent of buying an expensive pair of shoes, but somehow they don't work with one of your pant legs. Now, shoddy buttons shouldn't matter much if the stand feature is amazing, right? Remember, there's three modes, float mode, stable mode, and portrait mode. In reality, these modes should be called bouncy, stable, and tippy modes. Bouncy mode is great for consuming any sort of content that doesn't require you to interact with the screen because the moment that you do, it bounces or wobbles. Basically, for a few seconds, you get to enjoy the moments of borderline motion sickness as your brain tries to figure out what the hell is going on on the screen. That moth case really looks like it's having fun, just like bouncing around, like kind of vibing with music. It really does. Yeah. Pickle back. Pickle back. Now, stable mode is aptly named because it really doesn't move, but despite being marketed as having a bajillion viewing angles and heights, there's actually only one angle where the iPad doesn't bounce or tip, and it's this angle, which is great for consuming web content, scrolling through photos, but is a terrible angle for typing or using your Apple Pencil. Hell, even if you're an Apple Pencil user, you're probably not using this case because where you store the Apple Pencil is on the bottom edge that touches the table. Cool. Seriously, if you try mimicking the low angle on the smart folio case and tap it a few times, the moat float case collapses. Now, onto tippy mode, where again, it's gonna be great for video calls, but don't tap on the opposite tall corner of the hinge because you'll get to watch your iPad come crashing down on your table. If you need a case with a vertical setup, well, go with the Moshi Versa cover. Seriously, this float thing, just click the face palm in three, two, one. And the final kick to our collective face is the weight of the case. It isn't light, it weighs over 500 grams. The smart folio case is only 250 grams and the smart keyboard by itself is 700. 
Yikes. Hey, Moft, how's that influencer money working for you? So, Monty, how do you think people could help us out with this channel? That's a great idea, Monty. You should do that. Now we went all in and we bought the Moth float case as well as the trip fold keyboard as well. And what's the first thing that you thought about this product? I thought it was cute, but like all things that are generally cute, they aren't that useful. I thought it looked cool. But like all things that are generally cool, like you, they aren't useful. Useful at all. <laughs> Life lessons, cute and cool things are not useful. The first thing you're going to notice is the size. It is a tiny, tiny keyboard. Now, most keyboards have a length of about 27 to 28 centimeters from key edge to opposite key edge. The Moff Trifold keyboard is only 20 centimeters, so that makes the keyboard almost 30% smaller. Now, we will admit that the Trifold keyboard does feel solid. It feels like a nice piece of hardware for 40 bucks. The hinges of the keyboard move well, and there's a satisfying click when you fully open the keyboard. There's a similar satisfying click when you close it. There's magnets there. It's neat. Now, despite that, one of the silly things is that the edge of the keyboard doesn't sit flat with the hinges so if you press hard enough you'll get a seesaw effect which isn't a big deal breaker or a deal breaker at all but is noticeable and may get annoying. Now the keys themselves are only 15% smaller which means Moft had to do some magic and by magic I mean moving the apostrophe button and the front slash button above the enter button and making the bracket buttons accessible through a function button. A lot of buttons in the last 13 seconds. That all makes sense from a layout perspective. Now in actual usage, if you spend any time typing on a normal size keyboard, you're going to start fearing typing words with apostrophes and asking questions using the Moft Trifold keyboard. Why? Because well, the final kicker in our collective face is that your muscle memory is going to betray you because you're going to be used to doing a one key hop to press enter. You're going to be using a one row diagonal hop for backspace and on the Trifold keyboard, well, you're just going to end up using the trackpad a little bit and then pushing the Bluetooth button. Like seriously, if you spend any time typing on a normal keyboard, you are going to hate typing on this tiny aberration of a keyboard. Pickleback! Oh, There's like a 180 degree change in like opinion about this drink. I know. Oh, pickle brought, oh, oh. The I, amount of complaining I did before I that, we sat down. I thought that pick, this is good. The pickle brought. <laughs> what? You couldn't even get out a sentence. <laughs> so now I do realize that in the last section, I did call everything a trifold keyboard and not the tripfold keyboard. So, sorry guys. So out of all these keyboard products, again, the Moft has a one up on products that don't have trackpads, like all the stuff from Zag. But when it comes to other products with trackpads, like against the smart uh, Magic Keyboard, I mean, not the smart keyboard, the Magic Keyboard, and the version 2.0 of the Bridge product, and even the uh, Folio Touch, like this product can't hold its own against these other ones. Now I understand some of you muff lovers will say it's really cheap. But this thing, this iPad Pro is a couple thousand bucks. This entire setup's maybe 150 US dollars, I think. And it just hamstrings your entire uh, typing and trackpad experience. So what is kind of the point of like numbing down the potential that you have with your iPad Pro? If you absolutely need to get something, and well, it's, I love this Magic Keyboard. It is great. If you need a good alternative, the Folio Touch is going to be your next best bet. And the close third, I would say, is probably this Bridge product. But again, this setup does not hold its own against any other trackpad product that we've used. And again, unsponsored reviews, real usage, this is what we do. Now, Moff markets this entire thing as kind of like a travel accessory, specifically a mobile office for travelers. Yes, mobile is spelt without an E, and travelers has an extra L in it. Now, it's not entirely incorrect how they spelt it, but it does look visually odd on the bag. What is really odd is the photo on the website where they've got a photo of an iPad and a Moff float, a MacBook Pro and an iPhone, and the guy's not typing on the iPad or the MacBook, but on the trifold case, which again, as we've just explained, is terrible. So the only question that we have is, why? Why, Aaron, are you so annoyed? Well, you look at that picture. It's a picture of a dinkus typing on a keyboard. This keyboard, 
that's being connected to a MacBook Pro, which has a full-size keyboard, which is right beside an iPad as well as an iPhone. Literally, it is trying to go to the top of your kitchen shelf with a bunch of empty Amazon boxes while there's an entire step ladder beside you. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, that marketing fluff just blows my mind that companies would think, hey, this is a good idea. We're gonna market this really, 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 really tiny keyboard in that manner. Like, I just... But seriously, if you're doing any length of typing, say past half a sentence, you'd be better served using the on-screen keyboard of the iPad. Which is really the better option when compared to this. Ah! How about the trackpad? It is equally as cute. It is very, very cuteless. I see what you did there. <laughs> now, the trackpad isn't bad. It mimics most of the swiping options you get from the Magic Keyboard. And we say oddly usable because despite being approximately 40% smaller than the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard, you can still swipe from edge to edge on the iPad. Another odd thing is that you can right click using double finger tap, but Moth has also included a single click and right click button on the trackpad. From a response perspective, the trackpad is a bit clunky with vertical scrolling, which is something we found for most third party Bluetooth keyboards. Honestly, out of all the keyboard slash mouse cases that we've used for the iPad over the last few years, the Moth setup ranks pretty close to the bottom. It's not great. Now, as much as it pains me, pains me to say, even the uh, Bridge Pro Plus with the 2.02 update, which brings in native gesturing onto the iPad, I would take this thing over the muffed product. And that is so painful for me to say. So painful. So that's all we got for this video. Questions, comments, leave them down there. If there's another math product you want us to take us look, I'm not doing any more math products. Like they, we're again, <laughs> they sent me an email saying, we're gonna send you this product for free as long as you make a video for it. And I don't, I don't do those. We don't do that. No, right? we don't. We have levels. We have morals. <laughs> what else do we have? <laughs> Wait. Pickle back. Pickle back. Mmm. <laughs> that is very good. Anyways, first time watching one of my videos, click subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, help us out by getting your stuff through our Amazon links. Hit the notification bell. I said that right, Patreon. You can support us through Patreon. <laughs> and share this video with other people who think they like math products. Thanks for watching. Oh wait, also? You need to recommend cocktails for us. Yes. What's our next cocktail? Be nice. We're not alcoholics. We're not. <laughs> We're really not. We're not. <clears throat> like a shovel. A shovel's not cute or cool, but very useful. Very useful. Very useful. So true. That is not a cute look. <laughs> well, you nailed that one. <laughs> People who take pickles out of their food are weird. Like out of their burgers. Curl up. But, but like, these are good pickles. These are good. Like my kids take their pickles out of their burgers and I'm like, fine. Yeah, no, like grown ass adults, like eat your fucking pickle. It's a pickle. Grow pickled. up. It's, it's delicious. Good for you. And it's delicious. <laughs> okay, let's get this. <laughs>